Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell before we even get started so you get notified for all these cool videos. Today we're looking at a big block battle. We got a big block Chevy versus big block Ford stock and modified. In this video, wait, what's this? Pay no attention to that. Just imagine me floating in space. I'm going to integrate green screen stuff later on coming up in more videos. For right now, it's big block time. 464 versus 454 Chevy, both stock and modified. So why am I still talking? Let's get going. To get things started, we're going to take a look at the Gen 6 454, the Vortec 7.4 liter. This is in the 96 to 2000. Usually we find them in full-size trucks and also some SUVs and big work trucks also. And this, this combination works very well. We've run these big blocks an awful lot. The motor was originally rated at 290 horsepower and 440 foot-pounds of torque. It had 9.4 to 1 compression. It was originally equipped with fuel injection, although we ran this combination on the engine dyno with a dual-plane intake manifold and a carburetor and long tube headers. And that's exactly the way that we ran the Ford as well. It's important to note that the power rating of this combination, when we compare this, the factory power rating anyway of the Ford and the Chevy, on the Chevy, this is a net rating because after 1971 or 72-ish when they started introducing the net rating, uh, the power numbers basically dropped. Not because the power outputs dropped, although they did start dropping because of the sm introduction of the smog equipment, but it dropped more because of the way that they rated it. Before, originally they were rating the motors the way that they run them on the engine dyno, kind of like we run here. And then after the net rating, and the original one was gross, and after the net rating, they started rating it the way that it is actually in the car. So with the full stock exhaust manifolds and run at the right temperature, run with the, uh, all of the accessories and the way that it is basically in the vehicle. It's still a flywheel rating, but it's rated more true and accurate the way that you would get it in your vehicle. So on this particular example, we took the, this big block out of the wrecking yard and ran it on the engine dyno. As I said, we've, we've run it with the factory fuel injection, which works okay. It makes a little bit less power and a little bit more torque, but we ran this one with a dual plane intake. On this example, we ran an RPM air gap and a 750 Holley carburetor with the dyno headers that we run on. We also ran this with a Mazir electric water pump, and obviously we optimized the tune. But otherwise, it had the stock cylinder heads on it and camshaft and all that stuff, the way that it came out of the truck. And so equipped, our 454 produced 370 horsepower and 476 foot-pounds of torque. It's also worth noting that this is probably one of the better examples of the motors that we found, the, these big block 454s in the wrecking yard. We've, I've run, I'm sure, a dozen or more of these uh, at various stages with, that we've grabbed from the wrecking yard, and most of them make a little bit less power than this. It just depends on how well the motor was taken care of, but this is a fairly good example. One of the common upgrades that we do to these is install a camshaft. And it's also important to note that this late model Gen 6 454 came equipped with a hydraulic roller cam, whereas the Ford that we're going to take a look at, the 460, was equipped with your more normal kind of flat tappet cam, both of them hydraulics. So let's take a look and see what we did when we installed our camshaft. This particular one was from Comp Cams. It was a 276, an XE 276HR. It had 510 lift, a 224-230 degree duration, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. Enabled in order to run this cam, we also had to upgrade the valve train. So we had to put a valve spring upgrade, which required removal of the factory springs and doing a spring upgrade so that we could have enough valve spring for the available lift and also so that it would allow us to run the motor at the engine speed that this thing wanted to run to. In this case, we ran this thing to 5,500 RPM, which was past the power peak. And you can see on this example, running this camshaft picked up power basically everywhere from 2600 the gain was somewhat minimal but the torque the peak torque jumped up to 514.6 foot pounds while the peak horsepower was up to 427.9 or four, we'll call that 428 horsepower so now let's take a look and see what happened when we did similar modifications to a 460 
With the 460, we actually took a little bit different route, so you guys can prepare to comment and yell and scream, but I wanted to show the path on the 460 that we took to eventually get to about the same kind of result, which was good. And that's really what this video is designed to show, that if you have similar displacements, you really can make kind of similar power, even though one's a Ford and one's a Chevy. They're going to kind of do the same thing. But we actually started out on the 460. This is from a wrecking yard. This was actually an early one. So this is a 68 or 69 460, which meant it had higher compression than the later ones did. It was 10 and a half to 1. It had a hydraulic flat tap at cam. It was originally rated at 365 horsepower and 485 foot-pounds, so more than the big block Chevy was. But, as I pointed out, the big block Chevy is a net rating, and this is an earlier gross rating. So the actual numbers, as we'll see, are very, very comparable. Now, this was run with the factory cast iron intake manifold, and the big block Chevy was run with an RPM air gap intake manifold, so certainly a better manifold than the factory one. But don't worry, Ford guys, we did run this also with a different intake manifold and, and camshaft and, and lots of good modifications on this thing. So run with, in the way that we ran the Chevy on the engine dyno, electric water pump, long tube headers, but with the stock cast iron intake manifold, this otherwise stock, uh, but rebuilt. And as it turned out, when we took this motor apart, it actually turned out this was rebuilt at some time during its life because it was already 60 over. So it had a little bit more displacement as well. This thing made 349.2 horsepower and 492 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we installed a better intake manifold on it. In this case, it was a YN dual plane. Power obviously was up, 364.4 horsepower, although peak torque was actually down a bit uh, with the YN intake manifold. Peak torque was at 479 foot-pounds. You can see below 3,500, the wine manifold actually lost torque compared to the factory intake, but improved it from 3,500 out to 5,500. So if you're thinking about that intake manifold upgrade, know that there is going to be a change. Now, the one thing I want to note on the 460 is it probably would work better with an RPM air gap manifold than the YN. So that's also something to think about. <laughs> so you guys can argue back and forth. This one was run with a, I think a 750, yeah, 750 Holly. But we didn't stop there. We put a camshaft in this thing also as well. And here's what happened when we put the cam in. And the, the first thing that we'll notice out here past 5,000 RPM, we were getting into valve float. That's because the stock heads that we had on there did not have enough valve spring on them. But it did improve the both the power and the torque quite a bit. Uh, 404 horsepower and right at 500 foot-pounds, 499.5. So what we did was we took the heads off and, and upgraded them. We... We basically did a, a good valve job on them, put valve springs on them, and they even went in and just did just a little bit of work on um, port matching and uh, hit the bowls just a little bit. It isn't any more porting than you or I would do <laughs> ourselves if I was going to do any porting on an iron head, which I probably would not do, but it was a very minor amount of work. And the reason that I did this and re the reason that I'm including this is because the camshaft that was used was slightly smaller on the Ford than it was on the Chevy, so I want to give the Ford guys uh, a chance. This was an Extreme Energy 262, and again, it was a, a flat tap and, and not a hydraulic roller anyway, so it's going to be smaller, but it was a 515-520 lift, a 218-224 degree duration, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. But here's what happened after we installed the reworked 460 head. We saw a fairly big jump in power all the way up to 437 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 507 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see the 460 responded a lot like the 454 did to these kinds of modifications, mostly the camshaft and intake manifold. But now let's take a look and see how they compare to each other, both the stock and in this ultimate modified form. 
Now that we've taken a look at both the Gen 6 454 Chevy and the 460 Ford individually with the modifications we made to each of those, obviously we have to compare them so the Ford and Chevy guys can fight it out and yell and scream at each other. This was our stock Gen 6 454 from the Wrecking Yard. It had an RPM air gap, a Holley carburetor, long tube headers, and obviously a distributor, optimized tune so that it made the most power, and it produced... 370 horsepower and 476 foot-pounds. And here is the best comparison for this is the 460 with the aftermarket intake manifold on it, just like this Chevy has. And as you can see, they're very comparable. The Chevy maybe makes a, a touch more. The peak was 370 versus 364, six horsepower. The big block Ford actually made a little bit more torque down low. So between the two of them, there's really, in these trims, tested in these trims, there's really not a lot to choose from. They're both comparable. In fact, the Ford probably has a little bit more displacement and uh, a, a little bit more compression. The big block Chevy has a better intake manifold than the hydraulic roller cam. So, and, and maybe arguably a little bit better cylinder head. So, you know, it just depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> so Ford and Chevy guys, these kind of things kind of made the same power, which is why I'm doing this video. But let's take a look and see how they did in modified form. So this is our 454 with the camshaft, with the extreme energy camshaft. And here is our modified 460 with the worked over heads and camshaft. And again, we have very comparable power curves with the the Ford, it made 436 horsepower, and the Chevy made 428. Big block Chevy actually made a little bit more torque. 515 foot-pounds versus the Ford. 507 foot-pounds. So again, six or seven foot-pounds there. A little bit more power and again remember that the that the big block ford had a smaller camshaft in it by six or eight degrees of duration which is quite a bit it also was not a hydraulic roller which the big block was but the heads on the ford were worked a little bit so you guys can argue back and forth about which one of those things mean more but the reality is that both of these things make comparable power and you probably wouldn't notice this difference maybe if, if either one of these were in the car Get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's our takeaway in this comparison between our big block Chevy and the big block Ford? Which one wins? The big block Ford made more horsepower. The big block Chevy made more torque. The reality is there's not really a winner. I know that's not going to stop the Chevy guys from loving Chevys and the Ford guys from loving Chevys, but here's the reality. The big thing, the biggest thing that determines the power output of any motor to start off with is the displacement. If you have similar displacements, you're already starting off making the same power. And then if it has enough cylinder head to support that and has the right camshaft and an intake manifold and a carburetor, the chances are if they're similar displacements, they're going to make similar power. So what does that mean? If you are putting something in your Mustang, for instance, and you want to run a 460 big block Ford, it's going to do pretty well. But guess what? It also will do very well with a big block Chevy. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.